You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to another fabulous show of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is episode number 593. Glad you guys are with us. Hope you're having a great week. Thanks for hanging out. Yes. Hope you are out there enjoying the clear blue skies, flying away and enjoying life. Today, we got a question about operations manual. Not quite sure what he's talking about here. You're not? No, but I'll let's hear the question one more time. (laughs) We're just going to jump right in today. Hey guys, uh, Todd Ferris out of San Francisco Bay Area, ferrismedia.com. I uh, got a question for a single person business like myself. A uh, question comes up every once in a while about establishing policies and procedure manual. Um, do you think that not having this or having this may uh, impact future contracts or clients since they may want to see that and how you operate? Um, and then, uh, you know, is this going to possibly lower insurance, you know, for a single person business, it's a heck of a thing to take on. Um, it sounds simple, but I know there's a lot of ins and outs and what ifs, but just curious on what you guys are thinking. Um, you know, keep up the good work. The stuff you guys do is extremely encouraging and very motivating. And you guys are definitely on the right track for the future of this place. Um, I'm going on my, uh, I guess it would be my second year as a member. So uh, appreciate all the stuff you guys have done. And I'm looking forward to your questions and answers. Cool, Todd. First of all, thank you for being a longtime member. We really appreciate that. I'm sure you're enjoying the community. Yeah, I'm happy to hear that you're a part of the community. And it's a very good question. Um, Although I think that the question has different perceptions and answers Mm -hmm. based on those perceptions. For example, is it a good idea to create a system if you're ever going to scale your business for operating procedures that's going to be good for any new pilot coming on board? Yeah, absolutely. And and so I actually, using the terminology that Todd used, policies and procedures, there's a couple of different things that can be meant by that. So some people have more of an internal policies and procedures, like how to deal with employees, payroll, um, those kinds of issues, versus more of an ops type of policies and procedures, which I think is probably what he's referring to, Mm. would be more my guess, which then lends itself back into what you're talking about, which is developing systems. So one of the things he asked was, is this going to help me get business or is it going to be important to people that I'm trying to get business from? I don't think so. I mean, it's really more of an- I don't think so either. It's more of an internal thing Mm -hmm. to where- you're going to be at your best when you have really good systems in place. And this is probably going to be part of those systems at some point. Not saying you need to go do that right now. I couldn't agree with you more, Rob. I think any person who's looking to hire you doesn't give two poops poops. about, yeah, about how you do what you do. They expect you to know what you're going to do and they have no way to vet you. They have no way to differentiate your pre-flight checklist from someone else's pre-flight checklist. The only time I could think there might be an exception to that is if you're trying to get some sort of larger government scale contract. Which then it makes sense. Then they're probably going to want those kinds of documents and want to see that you have that kind of stuff in place. Insurance, they're not going to ask you for that. I've never Mm. heard of anybody being asked for those. It doesn't mean it couldn't be helpful. Perhaps if you're struggling to get better deals on insurance, et cetera, you might suggest that you have them and you might be able to get the underwriters to reduce premiums for you. That's going to have to be a conversation that I think you would initiate. I don't think they're going to ask you for those. Um, Another thing... Another thing to really think about, too, when it comes to procedures and policies is... In your procedures and policies, do you have the paperwork necessary to protect those pilots who are out in the field? So there's the whole procedures and guidelines aspect to it. But also, I would say you're going to want to give your people the drone pilot field kit, which has all the legalities, information, and whatnot that I think yep. will really help people out. Sure. Um, but, you know, I kind of lost my train. I thought I was going to say something else as far as the procedures and guidelines go in regards to, oh, that's uh, in regards to government contracts. Mm. I made a request to have Jake 
not you're not your Jake, a different right. Jake, yep. uh, on from the Air Force to come on and talk about what drone pilots should expect to okay. do in order to get government or GSA work. That's cool. Yeah. So they're coming on the show. I don't know when, but it will be happening. So if you guys are interested in hearing more about that, that uh, we do have that set up. We realize that is important to you. But... Um, you know, I, I have nothing more to say because you said it. Setting up a system is definitely a good idea for employees, for scalability, for continuity. But is it necessary, really? No. Do you have to jump on it right away? No. Is a client ever going to judge you on it? Doubtful. It's possible. Mm -hmm. Very doubtful. Um, and you should have a drone pilot field kit because all the legal information to protect your people and your business is going to be in there and you should always give your people that document. So Yeah, absolutely. So as we talk about systems, the way that I might look at this for somebody like um, Todd or anybody that's in his position is just start doing it piece by piece. Chip away at it. You're not even necessarily thinking of the fact that you're building an ops manual. You're just putting together the pieces of a system that you need. For example, different checklists, those kinds of things. Um, systems within your your digital infrastructure, those kinds of things could be part of your ops system, how you're going to handle safety, how you're going to handle inspections of your own equipment. Those are all kinds of things you want to be thinking about and documenting anyways. So start putting those pieces together. The other thing, Paul, is my hunch, because this is what happens with most industries, is as they develop and they grow and they get bigger, there are various people out there that start to develop these things, templates that you can buy, and then you just go in and you, you adjust them to whatever your systems are and you personalize them. It probably won't be too long. In fact, it may have already happened to where somebody could go do that as well. So definitely don't think, Todd, that you need to go spend a whole bunch of time and money developing this ops manual at this point. Yeah, I don't think so either. But if you do need the Drone Pilot Field Kit, you can just go to dronepilotfieldkit.com and download it for free because it's free. So go get it. And there's the start to your ops manual. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Hope that helps. Hope this information cool. helped other people. Again, thank you for the reviews. Give us some good questions. I want the nitty gritty detailed questions. Nitty I want gritty. the how can my Inspire 2 camera go in full 360 degrees question. Okay. Because it took me about a month to figure it out. And why would I want to do that? In case you're flying in very windy conditions and you just want to let the bird float in the wind and control the camera via the app to get smooth motion. Thank you. Oh. I was actually just saying they could add that to the end of the question, <laughs> but you answered it, so hey, thank you. Just saying. <laughs> At least that's one answer. <laughs> that's going to do it for us today, guys. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Dronio.